Hello, hello, hello. I know you recognize this voice because it belongs to your beloved math teacher, Mr. Smith. Today, we're talking about how to namely add fractions. Now, we're not just going to use simple fractions. No, 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 no. We're actually going to use mixed numbers. Since I'm helping you out just a little bit, let's go big or go home. But for you, you should be at home. Me, I'm always at school. This is my home, so I'm always at home. Anyway, let's come up with a problem. I'm freelancing this one. Um, let me think of something right now. Let's go with three and one half plus, hmm, four and two sevenths. Now, if you're noticing what I'm noticing, you're noticing that three and one half and four and two sevenths have different denominators. They have unlike denominators. Well, in order to add and subtract, we need common denominators. This is what we're going to do. We're going to come up with our common denominator in a new way. This is what I want to do. I want to start by writing these fractions, one half and two sevenths, one half, plus two sevenths. To find our common denominator in our answer for adding these two fractions, one half and two sevenths, we're going to use a method called the butterfly method. And I learned this one from Jordan Miller. First, let's start by multiplying our Unlike denominators, we have 2 and we have 7. 2 times 7 equals 14. Is that right? Okay. I'm right. You're right. Everyone's right. 2 times 7, 7 times 2 equals 14. It doesn't matter if you flip the factors around or not. It still equals the product 14. All right. But we're not quite done adding 1 half and two sevenths. We just know that our sum will have the denominator 14. The cool thing I learned from her, Jordan Miller that is, you multiply seven times one. Seven times one equals seven. Let's write that seven here. Great. What's the next thing? Hmm. The next thing to do is to multiply two times 2. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4. We have to add 7 to 4 to come up with our answer for adding these two fractions with unlike denominators. So, hmm. 7 plus 4 equals 11. And we keep our denominator the same, 14. We added our fractions. Now we can add our whole numbers. Three and four. Three plus four equals seven. Are we done? No way. We need to write in our fraction from adding our two different fractions, one half and two sevenths. Well, we know that one half plus two sevenths equals 11 fourteenths. So our final answer, our final sum, I should call it, since we're adding, is 7 and 11 fourteenths. I think that was pretty simple. Let's do one more problem to make sure that we have our knowledge in our mind. It's there and we can just easily pull it back up. Right now, Mr. Smith is stalling. I have to think of another problem. I like to improv a little bit. Here we have it. Thought of my new problem. 
let's go with mm, four and one fifth plus hmm a bigger number you say okay two hundred one and four six now if you're like me you remember the last problem we did together or you don't but you remember the process let's start by adding our fractions looking at these fractions one half excuse me it wasn't one half it isn't one half it's one fifth and four six looking at these two different fractions we can tell that they have unlike denominators five is not equal to six six is not equal to five well we need to do something about that let's use our butterfly method one fifth plus four six Hmm. I remember what to do and hopefully you do too we need to come up with a common denominator 5 is not equal to 6, 6 is not equal to 5 so what should we do? we should multiply 5 times 6 equals hmm, 30 oh I know what to do next Mr. Smith we need to multiply you're right we need to multiply 6 times 1. 6 times 1 equals 6. Oh, Mr. Smith, I know what to do next. We still need to multiply. You are still correct. 5 times 4 equals 20. But how are we going to come up with our numerator? Add 6 plus 20 equals da, da, da. mental math, yay us, 26. So we know the sum of adding our fractions, even though they have unlike denominators. Now we need to know the sum of adding our whole numbers, which are 4 and 201. We can do this mentally too, guys. It's not hard for us, especially when we have amazing minds. 4 plus 201 equals, I'm running out of room. It does not equal, I'm running out of room. 205. 205. I'll probably have to add these two together, put them together down here since I'm running out of room. But we know that the whole number for our mixed number is 205. Let me write that here, 205. And we also know that the sum for adding 1 fifth and 4 six is equal to 26 thirtieths. Let me write that behind my whole number. Our sum, our final sum, is a mixed number, 205 and 26 thirtieths. Here's my challenge to whoever's watching this video, hopefully many, because I'm not just making this just to make it. My challenge to you is to come up with a simplified answer. 26 thirtieths is a good fraction, but it's not the best fraction. It can be smaller. I'll leave it up to you, you brainiacs, you intelligent, wonderful people. Thank you so much for listening to me. Have a good day. Bye-bye.